Okay, just a, a heads up on that chapter eight homework. I was looking at problem eight six, and there was a little bit of uncertainty what temperature to base the properties on. So I, both temperatures are okay, but I put down the answers depending on what temperature you used for properties. If you use 350 for water or oil, here are the answers. If you use 366 for water and or oil, here are the answers. So you can see how your numbers correlate with this. Okay, so chapter nine so far, free convection. We last time pretty much developed and summarized the empirical correlation equations in chapter nine. Um, for different geometries. First of all, we had horizontal plates, vertical plates, horizontal cylinders, vertical cylinders. We're going to work an example today out of chapter 9, example 9-3. There's only two examples in chapter 9 that I think you should look at, and that's problems 9, 2, and 9, 3. So in chapters 9, the only two you should look at to see how they're worked are 9, 2, and 9, 3. But I'm going to work 9, 3 in class, so you're going to see how to work 9, 3. It's the more difficult of the two. But let's go back, and we've spent the last several weeks on convection heat transfer. We started out in chapter 6, more of an overview type chapter. We got into chapter seven, flow over external surfaces. Chapter eight, flow inside cylinders or tubes or pipes. Chapter nine, free convection heat transfer. And if you go back, just so you can see the similarity of these chapters, if you go back and look at chapter seven, now we're trying to find H, because once we find H, we can find Q. So the Nussalt, of course, has H built into it. So in chapter seven, flow over a flat plate. This is just one equation. There are several in, in that chapter, but I just put one down to show you its form. There's different equations for turbulent flow, for local H, this is for average H, but, but they are very similar to this equation. The last part of chapter seven, flow over a cylinder on the outside of a pipe or a tube. Here's the correlation equation, where the constants C and M come from a table. Chapter eight, flow in a pipe or a tube. Here's the correlation equation. Mm, and it, it can depend on, you know, is it laminar, is it turbulent? is a constant wall heat flux is a constant uh, surface temperature. But anyway, the form of the equation basically looks like this. Now, chapter nine, free convection, here's the form of the equation. But first of all, look at how similar they are. And all these guys right here, the way they correlate the experimental data is by this power law. No salt is a constant, Reynolds to a power. No salt equal a constant, Reynolds to a power. Chapter eight, no salt equal a constant, Reynolds to a power. Chapter nine, no salt equal a constant, Rayleigh to a power. Of course, one of the major differences, chapter seven and eight, it's Reynolds number. Chapter nine, forget Reynolds number, now it's the Rayleigh number. But the form of the equations is very similar. We engineers love that kind of correlation. It's a power law correlation. So you can see the similarity in three chapters of uh, convection heat transfer. Most of the basic correlation equations are no salt equal a constant, Reynolds or Rayleigh raised to a power. That's it. There's more complex equations. There's newer equations. 
You can check the, uh, you can check the uh, textbook when I, when I say newer, okay. The newer ones are like mid-1970s. It's not that new, but that's okay. That's the, that's the latest ones. The, they, they cover more property variations. They cover uh, more accurate data-taking methods and things like that. But we, in our class, we're focusing on these equations. They're the simplest ones, and it's nice to start there. Okay, so now we transist to chapter nine, example nine three. Okay, let me read it to you. The picture's on the board, but I'll, I'll read the words he gives you. Air flows through a long rectangular heating duct. A long rectangular heating duct. Here it is. Air comes in here, left-hand side. It goes along this duct. The word is long, big giveaway. 0.75 meters wide, 0.3 meters high. The outer duct surface is at 45 degrees. So the duct surface, TS, 45 degrees. Keep reading. The duct, the duct is uninsulated and exposed to air at a temperature of 15, 15. It's located in the crawl space beneath a home. Now, of course, most of our homes here in Southern California, that stuff's in an attic, but there are still older homes where all the duct work is in the crawl space under the floor of the home. So that's, that, it doesn't matter, that's what he says. The temperature down there is 15 degrees. Okay, what is the heat loss from the duct per meter of length? Okay, big hint, per meter of length, Q prime. He wants Q prime. Okay. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to show you a picture of the duct looking straight on where the air comes in, Th this view here on the left-hand side. Okay, the air is coming in this way from the, here. Okay, so what do I see? I see a bottom surface, a top surface, and two sides. So I'm going to... Um, Call those guys, I think I call that uh, A1, A2, and A3, and A4. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to call this one A1. The top is A2. This is A3. This is A4. This picture here, the top surface is A2. The bottom surface here is A1. The left-hand side is A3. The right-hand side is A4. Okay, four surfaces. You can see what we've got. We've got two side surfaces, and what are they? Vertical surfaces, and two horizontal surfaces, top and bottom. So, now let's look at, and to find Q prime, we need H, okay. Define H, we need Rayleigh. Okay, we'll do that. But let's start out and summarize again what we did last time uh, for a vertical surface. Okay, vertical surface. Equation 924. Laminar or turbulent. Magic number, Rayleigh, one times 10 to the ninth. Horizontal plate.
Okay, two possibilities. A hot plate and a cold plate. If it's a hot plate and you look at the top surface, use either equation 930 or equation 931. The bottom surface of a hot plate, use equation 932. If it's a cold plate and it's the top surface, Use equation 932. If it's a cold plate and it's the bottom surface, use equation 930 or 31. Okay, so there's our choices. So now we look at what we've got over there on our uninsulated duct. All right, let's do the, the vertical surfaces first. So these are the two side walls, uh, which would be for A3 and A4 vertical surfaces. Okay, we'll start out um, TF, the film temperature 303K. That's T surface plus T infinity divided by two. Get your properties at that temperature. Chapter six, seven, first step, calculate Reynolds number if you can. Chapter nine, first step, calculate the Rayleigh number if you can. Okay, the Rayleigh number. L, G, beta, L cubed, divided by nu alpha, G 9.81, beta, 1 over T film, 1 over 303. You got to shift gears. If you're in chapter 7, L means the horizontal length of the plate, x equal L. If you're in this chapter, of course, L means what? It's the vertical surface. So L is the height h. So L is 0.3. Put all those guys in there. Get really 7.07 .07 times 10 to the seventh. Less than the magic number, one times 10 to the ninth. So it's laminar. Okay, so now we know when I go to that uh, equation, uh, for vertical surfaces, it's going to be laminar flow equation. Equation 924. All right, equation 924, no salt, based on the length L. C, Rayleigh, L to the N. C, 0 0.59 for laminar flow, N, 1 fourth for laminar flow. Solve to get H, 
Okay, so that gives us now a start. We've got area A3 and A4. So now we're going to do area A1. Area A1. So area A1 is the bottom. Horizontal plate. Is the plate hot or is it cold? Oh, you can see TS is 45. It's hot. Hot plate. Is it the top or the bottom of the heated hot plate? The top. Okay. Got it. Oh, this I'm doing. I'm doing the. Um, okay. Let's see the bottom plate. So we're doing the bottom plate. It's that guy there. Heated plate bottom, 932. First step, find the Rayleigh number. And of course, my problem now is, what's L? Is it a length of something? I, I don't know. Is it 0.75 meters? Is it 0.3 meters? What's L? Vertical surface? I knew L. That's L right there. Is a horizontal surface this guy right here? No, it's not that guy. It's in your notes from last time. It says, um, where uh, L is equal to the surface area divided by the perimeter. Surface area W times X, perimeter two times W plus X. And my problem is, of course, I don't know what X is. I, what is X? I, X is the distance measured along where this is, that the air is flowing, the heated air is flowing. This is X. I don't know X, but he was kind. He said, oh, by the way, it's long. Oh, thank you. So I'm just going to put X in the equation. I mean, I don't know what X, it's going to be a big number. I know X is going to be a big number. Okay. So now I say to myself, you know what? This parentheses, W plus X, X is a real big number. W is probably a real small number. What's W? Three tenths meters. How long is this duct in your attic or in your crawl space? What's 50, 50 feet? 20, 30 meters. 20, 30 meters compared to three tenths. Oh yeah. So where X is much, much larger than W. If X is much, much larger than W, the parentheses, you might as well forget about that W right there. He's too small to worry about. So now what do you have? WX over 2X. Okay, L is W over 2. An approximation, the bigger the length of the duct is compared to W, the better the approximation, but that's what you do. So now you can get the Rayleigh number, because you know L, it's W over two. Okay, so Rayleigh number then, based on L, comes out to be 1.38, 10 to the eighth. 1.38 times 10 to the eighth. Does that mean it's laminar flow? No. Turbulent flow? No. What does it mean? I don't know and I don't care. That's the number it is. That's what it is. When air rises, rises off of the floor, for instance, is that laminar flow of air off the floor? Turbulent flow? No. It's not a boundary layer on a vertical plate. It's not a boundary layer. So you don't ask questions like that. 
you ask questions over here like that, is it laminar or turbulent? Here, you don't ask questions like that. You use it in what? The equation, which one? Bottom, heated plate, hot plate, bottom, 932. Okay, so 932, we have Nussalt, L, H, L over K, 0 0.52 Rayleigh number raised to the one-fifth power. This gives H equal 1.56. Okay, one more to go. Area, oh, that should be, uh, yeah, this is the uh, bottom, so area A1. Now we'll do area A2, the top. Okay. Did uh, L change? No, it was the same rectangular area. Did the rail number change? No, it's the same. Did the equation change? Of course it did. Okay, heated plate, heated plate here. Top surface, top surface here. There's a table. There's a table that gives you C and N, depending on where you are on the Rayleigh number, two ranges. There's two values of C and N, depending on where the Reynolds no Rayleigh number falls in the range of values given in it. So, I'll put them down here. This is equation 931. Yeah, top equation 931. No salt L 0 0.15 Rayleigh L raised to the power one third. This gives H equal 5.47. Okay, so now we have H for each of the surfaces, A1, A2, A3, A4. Where do you expect the best heat transfer to? You don't want the heat transfer, you want to keep the air in the, in the duct warm, but where does most of the heat transfer take place? Oh, look at the H's, 477, 156, 547, there he is, the top surface. Of course it's the top surface. You've got air being heated near the top surface and it wants to go up. Its density goes down, the buoyant force goes up, it wants to raise up. That's fine, nothing stops it. It can go straight up. A1, the bottom surface. The colder air touches the surface, it gets heated. Buoyancy, it wants to go up. It can't, there's a wall. Bad heat transfer, oh yeah, real bad heat transfer. Real good heat transfer. Somewhere in the middle on the sides, boundary layer. Boundary layer builds up here, boundary layer builds up here. What is it, laminar boundary layer? So yeah, it makes sense. It's always good when you get answers to see if it makes some physical sense to you. If it doesn't, go back and check your properties. Most errors are in those properties. People get the powers of 10 wrong many times, but that, that's generally what happens. Okay, now we're not done. We got the H's, now you gotta find the Q. Okay, that's the problem set. Find Q prime. Watts per meter, because I don't know the length. Okay, so 
Q prime equal, there are two sides, Q prime sides plus there's a top, Q top plus there's a bottom, Q bottom prime prime. Okay, let's do this guy first. Two, um, the, uh, this is for the um, sides. Okay, the sides have H, so the two sides, 0 0.3. That's the height of the side. Uh, and the H is 4.77. Plus, big brackets there, big bracket. Uh, the top, for the top, W is 0.75. H for the top, one. Uh, 5.47 plus the bottom 0 0.47 that's W of uh, 7.5 pardon me H on the bottom is low 1.56 H A delta T, okay, delta T, hot minus cold, 45 minus 15. So Q prime comes out to be 244 watts per meter. Okay, so that covered three equations. Uh, vertical surfaces, got it. Horizontal surfaces, heated, got it. Top surface, one equation. Bottom surface, other equation. Here, here. So that covered, that example problem is, is a good one because it covers all of those uh, possibilities in there. Any questions on that then? Okay. Now, what's left? Horizontal and vertical cylinders. Okay. So now we'll do a, uh, let's make some room right here. Let's do a vertical cylinder. We'll, we'll do both of them for example problems, but we'll do the vertical one first. So, example vertical cylinder. Okay, so let's put some numbers in here. D, 20 centimeters diameter. L is one meter in height. T, infinity, 25 degrees. T surface is colder, five degrees. Properties at T film. Okay. Okay, 
Uh, so that's oh, and uh, fine Q. All right, we got everything we need, I think. Properties at two two eighty eight T film is two eighty eight Kelvin. All right, um, we talked about it last time. We said um, for a vertical cylinder. If you check a certain number and it satisfies an inequality, then you can model the vertical cylinder as if it is a vertical plate. We talked about that last time. But you've got to check to see if that can be, be true. So uh, we have to check this first. Check D over L greater than or equal, I don't know yet, 35 over the Grashoff number to the one fourth. If that's true, I can use the equations for a vertical surface to solve this problem. Grashoff, chapter 9. Dimensionless parameters. Nussel, Rayleigh, Grashoff, Prandtl, four of them. Okay, let's, we haven't done Grashoff yet. Okay, Grashoff number. Where Grashoff, G, it looks like Rayleigh almost, it's a little different. T S minus T infinity L cubed divided by nu squared. Here it is right here. Grashoff, Rayleigh over Prandtl. Okay, so we, we know everything, G 9.81 beta 1 over T film, absolute, we know T, yes, we know T infinity. Um, always put the hot temperature there first. You don't want a negative Grashoff number. T infinity minus T surface. Oh, I'm sorry, it is the opposite way. The T surface is 45, excuse me. Oh, I'm not, not I'm going the wrong way, it is. Get rid of that guy. So we have T infinity. T infinity, 25 T surface. Now, that's a good point because what's happening here? That cylinder is cold. The air is warm. There's going to be a boundary layer, and it starts up here. That's x equals 0. And it gets bigger as it goes down this way. That's x equal L. OK. Um, <laughs> again, in chapter 9, there's either two symbols in, in the Nussalt and the Grashoff uh, and in the Rayleigh. It's either an L, or, an L or a D. Normally, we would use D for this, but we're going to check this to see if we can approximate it by a plane surface where this is L. So we show that as L in here. OK. Um, when we get to horizontal surfaces, horizontal pipes, guess what we use now? Oh, we use diameter now. It's a diameter. It's a diameter in there. It's a diameter in there. It's a diameter in there. If it's horizontal, diameter. If it's vertical and this is true, we use the height. Expand the cylinder out flat. Now it's a flat plate. Okay, so go ahead there and get that guy then. Um, Grashoff is equal to 3.085 times 10 to the ninth. Got it. Uh, 
So D over L, 0.2 over 1, 0 0.2. Greater than or equal to, Grashoff, 35 divided by Grashoff to the 1 quarter, 0 0.1. 0.1485. Is 0.2 greater than 0 0.1485? Yes. Can use equation 924. Uh, new salt based on L. 0 0.10 Rayleigh L to the one third. That's the equation solve for L. I'm solve for H. Three point four two. Then Q equal H A surface T what's hot infinity minus T surface surface pi D L forty two point nine watts forty two point nine watts. So, this is the fourth of the five geometries. Vertical surface, vertical cylinder, horizontal surface hot, horizontal surface cold. We've done those four so far, an example. The one left is horizontal cylinder. Okay. Um, that's going to take a while, so I'm going to stop at this point on that. Uh...